All right, everybody, we're going to get started. Welcome. It's Wednesday. Once again, we're here for fellowship and to uh, have our team go. So I have a good message for you guys today. It's called Meet Me in the Middle. And I have had so many things going on since I saw you guys just last week. Um, And I'm excited to share some of that with you. But it got me to thinking about what do we do when we're in the middle of adversity? When we're in the middle of something that's really challenging that we're going through. And I know that this applies to you guys just as much as it applies to any adult. Because, and in some cases, I would say a teenage walk in Christianity is as challenging as anything else, okay? So this message is specific for you guys, but based off of what I've been going through, okay? So I want to talk today about Meet Me in the Middle, inspired by Psalm 103. And does anybody know what's kind of special about Psalm 103? I thought Miss Kim's Kim's hand was going up immediately. That was awesome. Um, Psalm 103. Does anybody know what's kind of special about Psalm 103? It happens to land right in the middle of the Bible. That's a, that's the a big importance of it right there. Every psalm is good. Every verse in the Bible is good. But Psalm 103, 1 and 2 happens to be the uh, 15,551st and 15,552nd verses in the Bible of a total of 31,102. Yay, Mr. Matt, he remembered numbers. That was pretty good. Anyway, um, Okay, so that's kind of the the starting point for where we're going with today. We're in the middle of the thing, okay? So before we get started on our message today, we want to go over our prayer request list. And I want to make sure, don't let me skip it. I want to make sure we take everybody's prayer requests before we're done, okay? So think right now, if you've got a prayer request, you can put your hand up, all right? So let's pray for Pastor Gunter. I just met with him today. Um, He is doing better than he was. But I'd love to see some more strength in him, some more gas in the tank, so to speak. Okay, so we're praying for Pastor Gunter and his family, Tabernacle Ministries and Valley Christian Academy uh, to continue to thrive. It's my understanding that fourth grade is a really big deal this year. I've heard a number like there's 25 students in fourth grade alone. Um, I was at men's breakfast this week, which if anybody is aware Every Tuesday, there's a men's breakfast right up the street at Susie's. And some of the guys were telling me they can remember a time when there was one graduating student for for the whole thing, for the whole school. They can remember a time. So it's a really big deal that the school has come this far. So we want to keep praying for the school that it can continue to do so well. Um, I'm praying for the VCA athletic department for your guys' spiritual and physical health. I say this one every single week, but guys, it's it just cannot be stated enough. You guys need all the prayer you can get. You guys are up against stiff competition. You're always the underdog, and yet you guys seem to just do amazing stuff out there. So I'm excited to see what you guys do this year. And then, of course, for our youth ministry to continue and grow in our relationship with Christ Jesus. Okay. So I personally have prayer requests. And I would love to hear what you guys have to say, if anything, if there's any unspoken prayer requests, if you want to pray for your parents, for your friends, for your relationships, for the upcoming school year, if there's anything on your mind or on your heart, uh, now is a good time for us to be able to pray for you. Yeah. The situation. Thank you. That's, that's mine too. Yeah. We're right there, my boy. Yes. I'm sorry. Oh, you're his dad, your dad's knee. Okay, what what's going on with that? Did he get hurt or is it just he got hurt? Okay. All right, that's fair. Yeah, Connor. Oh, yes, of course. Is there any updates? Okay. Is there anybody else we can pray for today? All right, very good. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to come together. God Almighty, we need your power on the ministry. We need your power on the youth group. Father, we have unspoken requests that I'm already aware of. We're praying for Pastor Gunter. We're praying for the school. We're praying for the youth ministry. We're praying for the athletic department. We're praying for so many important people and children and wonderful spirits in this ministry. God, we need your presence in all of our lives to continue and grow in our relationship with you. And we give you all praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, and I want to continue to encourage you 
to seek the Father in prayer whenever possible, whenever something occurs to you. Okay, we're going to do Bible trivia, um, and there's going to be little prizes to go along with it. Miss Kim is faithful in making sure that's happening. So we'll make sure that we give her a quick round of applause for her participation in making sure. Okay, that's a big deal. All right. So on what holiday do we celebrate the birth of Jesus? Is it A, Easter, B, Advent, C, Christmas, or D, New Year's Eve? And I saw Connor. C, oh, it's Christmas. Let's see. Yeah, it sure is. It's Christmas. Yeah. No, that's, that is a rough one huh, to get it started, right? That's okay. All right, here's another one. Hopefully it's just as easy. Who is Jesus's mother? Is it A, Esther, B, Mary, C, Sarah, or D, Ruth? What do you think? B, Mary, let's see. Yes, you're correct. I, you thought maybe it was C? Yeah. All right, let's keep track of who's got the prizes, okay? Now, next one. What kind of disaster did God warn Noah about? Was it A, a flood? B, an earthquake, C, a drought, or D, a volcano? Let's see from you right there. A, A, it was a flood. You're absolutely correct. All right, next one. What are winged celestial helpers sent by God called? Is it A, butterflies, B, birds, C, mortals, or D, angels? I saw you over there. Angels, that's correct. Of course, it's angels. All right. What is the first book of the Bible called? Okay, Zoe, I saw your hand. Is it A, Wisdom, B, Judges, C, Genesis, or D, Revelation? C. Is it C? Is it Genesis? It's Genesis. Yes, of course it is. Okay, that's it for Bible trivia this week, guys. I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you're having a good time. I love seeing your answers. Okay. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, the message for today is called Meet Me in the Middle. So when you're in the middle of adversity, that's when your patience, when your faith, when everything about your walk with God is being tested the most. That's like the second act in any kind of a, a story that you're in, okay? And so I wanted to show you something. I want you to see up here, it says, things that matter. Things that matter. What's this over here? Things you can control. Things that you actually can have an effect on, right? And then what's this right here? What you should focus on. That's the things in the middle of this, what's called a Venn diagram. I don't know if you guys are familiar. Venn diagram, okay? Things that matter, things that you can control. All too often, anxiety or depression is going to set in when we, A, lose focus on Jesus Christ, or B, Start thinking about things that used to be and aren't anymore or things that are on their way and we're worried about what the results are going to be. I'm here to tell you today, my experience just since I saw you last week, is that we need to keep our focus on God no matter what. No matter how excited we get, no matter how sad we are, you want to keep your focus on God because he's going to keep you nice and steady on the inside despite how rocky life might feel on the outside, okay? So I want you guys to keep that in mind. Now, here's an important lesson for you guys. Up here is our one guy named Sin. He's committed a sin. He's, he's done a bad thing. He's had a bad day, and he's had an effect on people around him because he's reeling from his own sin. It's his guilt that's manifesting in a a life that does not honor God. Now, this one person, this one person in his sin has an effect now on people around him. You see where this is going? Then those people right there have an effect on other people around them. Now you can see the slippery slope of one person's sin in a community. All of a sudden, a bunch of people become affected by everything that's going on. And I want you guys to get this, okay? Goodness and service to the Lord works exactly the same way. When we abide in the Father's will and we focus on what God wants for our lives, and we try to focus on serving Him in every opportunity and every season He brings us to, you're going to find that you can have an effect on your community in the very same way. There is no 
way God wants us to go around sinning. Amen. He is trying to keep us, not only us, but the people he brings us into contact with to stay out of that kind of a lifestyle. So it's important for us to remember to focus on our testimony, to focus on our walk with God and how that's going to positively affect not just ourselves, but our friends, our family, and everyone around us. Okay, so we're going to jump to our first verse for the day. And this is from Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is with me. Bless his holy name. Now this is that 15,501 verse. Verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Now, in order for us to understand what all the benefits are from God, you'd, you'd have to pretty exhaustively read the Bible. I'm not going to take you guys through all that today, but I do want to kind of take you through, for the sake of brevity, a list of some things that are the benefits of God. So what are they? He forgives iniquities. He heals diseases, and we've seen it happen over and over again. He saves us from destruction. That's the punishment reserved for our own sins. He crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercy. He crowns us. He gives us our righteousness. He gives us good things so that we can feel youthful even through old age. As my body begins to wear out, as I'm aging, I'm almost, I'm on the other side of 40 now. And as my youth is leaving me and wisdom is supposed to be setting in, I can tell you for sure, a youthful heart is more useful to me than a youthful back, if that makes any kind of sense. Okay. Merciful, gracious, and slow to anger. I love the slow to anger part. No matter how hard I try, I can still seem to goof up when it's the least appropriate. When it's the, the last thing I should be doing, that's right when I goof up. And I am so grateful that God in heaven not only sees me, but he sees the true me and not just how I can mess up from time to time. Let's see. His anger doesn't last forever. So even though he becomes angry at our sinful behaviors, he understands that it is outside of our control, outside of our focus on him. As high as heaven is, so also is his mercy toward us. And that's really important because mercy is the real core of what the message is all about. And let's see, he is a father who takes pity on us. Now, all of you guys have parents or loved ones or guardians who are in your life and who are taking care of you. I can tell you as a father, I don't want to ever have to be upset with my kiddos. That's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to love on them and to support them and to guide them through life. And that is really important for us to get a hold of because that's what God does for us as well. So he pities us. He remembers we're made of dust. He understands that there is limitations to what we can do. There is a certain number of gifts that we're given. There is a certain number of ways in which we can serve him. And his mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. That's the final part of Psalm 103. Now, I find that, that to, that's just the crowning gem uh, inside of this whole message is that he is merciful from everlasting to everlasting. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump to what I have found to be six tips for remembering the Lord in the middle of adversity. Okay, and this is the bulk of the message. There's six points here. In the middle of difficulties lies opportunities. That's a quote by Albert Einstein. Similarly, we have a quote by C.S. Lewis, and it says, hardships often prepare ordinary people for extraordinary destinies. I could have never imagined two years ago that I'd be standing in front of you guys today. I could have never imagined two years ago that I would have been offered a position to work for the ministry here. My official title, by the way, is pastoral assistant. And that is what I'll be focusing on the most is assisting in the ministry and everything that has to do with over there. It's during challenging seasons where our strength to persevere is put to the test so that we can develop an even greater strength for whatever life may bring going forward. While there is never a tomorrow promised, God is continually growing us for what he has in store for us next. 
And it's vital for us to grab hold of the idea that even in the middle of adversity, God is at work in our lives. So tip number one, perseverance through challenges. For you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Perseverance is at the core of what God is hoping for us. He's getting us ready for what's next and getting us ready for what's next continually. And anybody who works out their body, and I use the same example a lot, but anybody who's working out their body understands that while today they might not show the strength that they desire, they are working towards tomorrow's strength. And that's always the light at the end of the tunnel. That's constantly what they're working towards. So let's go to uh, tip number two. Practice an attitude of gratitude. Now, sometimes we hear these types of things so often that we get a little, it's almost redundant. We, we, we fall into this trap of thinking it's a, what's called a trope. But I'm here to tell you, putting on an attitude of gratitude is a choice. It's a choice to be grateful for the things that God gives you in your life. Now we have pizza here tonight, for example. We have bottled water here. We have air conditioning and electricity. And we have a gathering where we're safe. I heard a testimony recently about a situation in China where people have to drive or travel almost 17 hours for one congregation. 17 hours is as far as I take my family on vacation every so often to visit Idaho. These people have to travel 17 hours to see one Bible in person. And we take these things for granted. We, we have lost our gratitude for what God has placed in our lives. Medical science is beginning to discover what the Bible has taught for thousands of years. Focusing on positive aspects of life, especially during trying times, can help you maintain and even increase physical and mental health. Regularly expressing gratitude can also promote resilience and enhance your ability to recognize opportunities amidst adversity. Studies have proven an attitude of gratitude can reduce your risk of heart disease, decreased anxiety and depression, and I don't know if you guys know anybody who has ever suffered from that. I personally have before. I personally know people who go through it today. And practicing an attitude of gratitude has a huge impact on just that. It can improve your personal relationships, boost your immune system of all things, and keep a healthy weight, well-regulated sleep patterns, and coping with chronic illness and medical conditions that are outside of your control. A gratitude, an attitude of gratitude is one of these things that says, well, while I may need prescription glasses, hey, at least I got them. Hey, my hair is turning gray, but at least I still got it. Yeah? Hey, it was hard for me to get here on time, but at least I made it. Okay? So we want to practice gratitude whenever possible, guys. Looking to Colossians three seventeen, And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. As we praise God, as we give all glory to him, not only does our testimony become more powerful, our witness becomes more firm, God works through us in a more powerful way. He can reach more people, like the diagram that we saw before, just by displaying this awesome power of gratitude, which is sorely lacking in a world today, that it demands immediate gratification. All right. So tip number three, we're halfway there. Who's your crew? Your favorite five, okay? They say the five people you spend the most time with will have the greatest impact on your character. If that's true, you should intentionally surround yourself with Christ-minded people. Cultivate Christ-centered relationships with peers, friends, and of course, family, who are encouraging, supportive, especially during challenging times. A strong support system can help you maintain a positive outlook and give you the confidence to pursue opportunities. Now, when you're feeling down and glum, it's hard for you to feel like you can extend yourself to grab hold of something new. You might even try to tell yourself that you don't even deserve to grow in this life that God has given you. But I'm here to tell you that every day is another opportunity for God to give you something even bigger. The trees that you see never limit themselves on how high they can grow. 
Their branches and their stems go as high as they possibly can, and their roots reach as deeply as possible, and they never stop to question whether or not they should be. They are continually growing as big and as strong as they can possibly be. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. What does that mean? That means continue to help each other grow. That means be a positive influence, even when it means that you have to make a difficult choice. Be a positive influence. Affect others around you. Help them in their Christian walk, and especially when they're not doing what they should be doing. Number four, reflect on past experiences. All right, analyze your past experiences with adversity and identify the opportunities of growth that resulted from trusting God in those situations. Reflecting on how Jesus has delivered you through challenges can embolden you to trust his ability to do so again. So every time I go through something that is so difficult, I am reminded of just how far God has brought me. The expression out of the Bible is that the Israelites were brought out of Egypt. And in every case where people have looked backwards to see where they, longingly they looked backwards like they wanted to go back, it did not work out for them. So I'm here to tell you, keep your eyes on God and he will lead you through. So we look to Proverbs 3, 6. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. All right, point five, and we're almost there, guys. Avoiding rigidity in our thinking. All right, the Bible describes rigidity in our thinking as being stiff-necked against God's will. We must continually extend ourselves to seek God because he is continually revealing his will for us. We cannot hope to navigate life on our own understanding. God created us to trust him in the challenges he allows in our lives. Never fall into the trap of thinking that just because you haven't experienced something before, that you are unable. Anything is possible with God. So right now I'm in a process where I'm trying to buy a house. And it's really exciting for me, but it's also very scary for me because guess what? I've never done it before. And there's lots of numbers and there's lots of options. And there's lots of people who want to take advantage of people like me who really doesn't know what to do. But I thank God that he is putting me in connection with the right people. And maybe you know some of them because they're around here. But he's putting me in connection with the right people who can hopefully help my wife and I, my children and I, through this very exciting but nerve-wracking time. And as long as I keep my eyes on God, I understand that the situation will reveal itself. The right house will reveal itself when the time is right. There's no way God's going to let me walk into the wrong situation if I'm putting it all on him. If I'm saying, God, I trust you. I expect you to do what you expect of me. If I have all my faith in you and I look only to you and I'm not trying to do this for some earthly, fleshly gain, he's going to see me through. So we look to Matthew 19, 26 for this affirmation. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. All right. Point number six, guys. Consider journaling your experiences. I've had a lot of, a, a lot of trouble keeping my memory straight. It's really easy for me to focus on the negatives and forget the positives. There's so much to be grateful for, and it's so easy to let it slip through your fingers like sand. All too often we forget how far God has brought us because negativity seems to be what the world wants us to focus on. It'll tell you how sick you are. It'll tell you what you don't have. It'll tell you what they do have. And all the while you're lost in the, like a ship at sea. And you have no way of knowing just how precious you actually are in the eyes of God. That's why it's so important for us to look at ourselves through a God-centered focus, through a God-centered lens. God created you on purpose. He didn't want creation without you. He didn't want this time period to happen without you. He needed you to affect the people around you. It's a great calling you've been brought to, to understand that Jesus Christ is not only Lord and Savior, but he's for you, not against you. So we look to 1 John 4, verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 
There is nothing you can't do if you give it all to God, guys. All right. So we're going to look to the bonus scripture for today of 8.23.23. And this one is out of Ezra 8.23. So we fasted and besought our God for this, and he was entreated for us. So I don't know if any of you guys have ever tried a fast before. A lot of people commonly think of fasting as just food. I've done quite a bit of research on this so that way I could tell you assuredly fasting is not limited just to food and drink. It is, a, it is an intentional step away from anything that God has given you in your life that might be disproportionate in your life. If you're finding that too much TV or too many friends or too much video games or too much sports or that vehicle or whatever that situation might be in your life, if it has become disproportionate, there's a risk that it could become an idol. And God tells us that when we fast from these types of situations, it is for our own good. As we fast, as we take a step away from these things that draw our attention, we can find ourselves even closer with God himself. And that's it for today, guys. Jesus loves you. I hope you believe it. So I'd like to pray us out today. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to have come together. God, thank you for the words of wisdom we find in your book, your holy word, the Bible. God, I pray that these words touch these hearts and minds, that through you, we're all empowered, and by you, you can work through us to reach others. God, I had some pictures today of how sin might affect one person and how that will extend itself to others in the community. God, I hope that from this message, the takeaway is that through walking a walk with you, Lord, a walk that Jesus, a will in his will, that we would affect our community in a positive way, all the way leading up to a, a revival, God, where our hearts become opened to your will and what you would have us do. God Almighty, we praise you and we thank you for this opportunity to come together in Jesus' name. Amen.